Oh, the Seminoles, yes, unbeaten on the season at 19 and 0. First pitch delivered. Little chopper left side, right diving stop, but Williams will beat it out. And Jacob Hindelider able to knock down the low throw. So first pitch swinging and the leadoff man on for an aggressive Florida State lineup. Well, Darden with a fastball that got in on the hands on Williams. Blake Wright made a really nice play. Clemson with a shift on. I mean, they had him pulling pretty good, and Wright just wasn't able to come up with it quickly enough. The fleet-footed Williams beats it out for a base hit. So here's Smith, 14 for his last 32. Sophomore to sophomore, and he takes ball one. Boy, there's just no holes in this Florida State lineup, and absolutely essential that you don't give them more than three outs an inning. They will work the count. They are aggressive on the first pitch generally. And you got to pitch inside of these guys, says Eric Backage. That'll be the game plan today. And Darden falling behind the eighth best hitter in the nation coming into the weekend. Smith 3 and 0. Not a team that runs much, but boy, are they efficient when they do 29 of 30 on the base pass for the Seminoles so far this season, but they pick and choose. Not an overly powerful lineup, but some pop. Taking all the way, a four-pitch walk. And just like that, first two reach for the Seminoles in the top of the first. Really, the only pitch that he missed badly with was, was the breaking pitch. That wasn't close. The other ones were just off a little bit low. Tigers looking for that double play ball. Darden, his eighth appearance of the season from the stretch. On the right side and bobbled. Everybody's going to be safe. The chopper by Tibbs. Hinderleiter looked like he had the runner at second. Ball hasn't left the infield yet, and the Seminoles have the bases loaded. We talked about having to make the plays, the fundamental plays, and that's one where Hinderleiter just did not handle the transfer very well. You see Jimmy Bellinger coming out trying to slow things down a little bit. I mean, we're four minutes into the game, and Florida State bases loaded no one out. Seminoles team, top five in the nation, with 10.4 runs scored per game. So it gives you an idea as to how productive they are with their bats. On the other hand, their team ERA of 2.79, second nationally as the weekend begins. And this, is a, this is a really good baseball team. Power arms, their pitching staff, and as we said, just no holes in their lineup. And you, know, you think about what Darden has done. He's given up two softly hit balls. Now he did walk the second hitter he faced, which which is, is on him. Jaime Ferrer, the cleanup hitter, left fielder, a junior out of Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Led their team a couple of years ago with a 320 batting average. Homered with three batted in, going three for 12 in the series in Tallahassee a year ago. Tigers taking two out of three, and that was really, if you look at that series, that's what flipped the season for the Clemson team. They did a hidden yeah. ball trick in that series in the Friday game, and things really churned from there on their way to the ACC tourney title. One and 17 one wins in a row. Ferrer second on their team with seven home runs. And he skies it high and deep left center field. Canarella back and a grand slam. And the Florida State Seminoles jump out to the 4 nothing advantage. Well, Darden trying to come in on Ferrar a little bit and, and just didn't get in there far enough. Just on the inside part of the plate about thigh high 91 mile an hour fastball. That was just driven out of the park pretty much into the wind and boy you talk about a tough start for the Tigers and a great start for the Seminoles here you see it pitch pretty much down the, the middle and he knew it was gone immediately. First homer allowed by Darden this season in his eighth appearance 
Eight now on the year for Ferrer. That ties him with James Tibbs for the team lead. Drew Ferro first pitch swinging for strike one. Well, obviously, not the game plan the Tigers considered. But I'm always inter interested to see how pitchers recover from from put his I mean that's a really tough start is he going to come back and throw strikes and and maybe post a couple of two or three zeros for this team and if he does boy that says a lot about his mental toughness an infield hit a four pitch walk an error on a attempted force out at second and then the slam for the Seminoles and Drew Ferro goes down swinging for out number one Good looking breaking pitch. I, I believe that might have been more of a maybe a cutter, but it sank and not close to the strike zone. And again, he, you know, Darden is not missing by much here. He made the mistake of missing over the middle of the plate against Ferrer. Off speed, designated hitter Marco Dingus. Over his last 10. And Darden gets ahead of him. One and two. Well located fastball. Dinges came to them from Tallahassee Community College. Up the middle and through. And a one out single. Dinges on the low end of their scale in terms of their lineup. Step to the plate hitting 302. So yeah, just build on that. But that's, that's way down there. Yeah, as I mean, far come as on. They Boy, what a lineup they have. Yeah. Coming off a rough season a year ago. They were 23 and 31, 9 and 21 in the ACC. They were a 333 team away from Tallahassee. Opposite field hitting for Daniel Cantu on the first pitch. And now first and second with one away and four already in on the slam by Ferrer. Well, to address the turnaround that, that you've talked about, that's what the transfer portal can do. And, and you know, look, Florida State is a, a great destination for top-notch players, and Link Jarrett is, is an outstanding recruiter and a developer of players. So. McGuire Holbrook, their catcher, eighth place hitter in the order. He's Swinging on the first pitch and foul for strike one. Boy, right hopping that one. Yeah, that was going to be a double play if it, if fair. Holbrook began his career in the Big 12 at West Virginia. In fact, he was a second team all Big 12 performer in 2022. Went two of 11 against the Tigers in the series last year. And yes, there is a story behind the name. We'll detail that for you as we continue. And there's also an interesting coincidence with this guy and his current head coach. 0-2 oh on the Florida State catcher. Eighth man to bat in the inning. Darden just trying to get through this frame further unscathed, trying to get as deep into this contest as he can. Tigers' normal first game starter in a weekend series has been Austin Gordon. 0-2. Oh, 1-2 and two the count. Gave him the pitch up and away. Might change his eye level here with uh, something down and in, maybe a breaking ball. Stays hard. Guide on the right side. Hinder lighter runs out of room. Seminoles their first ACC road trip of the year and in fact just their third true road game of the season they have been to the upstate of South Carolina already they yeah. played in a showcase over at Floor Field a few weeks back won three games Ooh. there it's a great thing that the folks who run the Greenville Drive do they yeah. bring a bunch oh, of yeah. college teams in yeah, Michigan, Michigan State, State in there's a connection to the right. drive owner Craig right. Brown that's but exactly right. Bring teams in from the Midwest and also from the Southeast and have them get together. Michigan State alumni. Furman was 
always a participant in that. One two pitch. Chopped to the left side, right, catcher running. Second one, throw to first. 5 4 3, and the inning is over. But the Seminoles uniform with a 13 strikeout effort against Butler. Cam Canarella, Tigers leadoff hitter, fouls away the first pitch that he sees. 95 mile an hour fastball. Canarella. Great series down in Tallahassee a year ago. Off speed fooled him. And he's in an 0 2 hole. Drove home nine. Six out of 12 against Florida State pitching last year. But again, any comparison to the Seminoles of a year ago to now is it's, yeah. really a waste of time. 26 new players, and many of them contributing to this 19 0 team. Yeah, this coach Link Jarrett and his staff just did an outstanding job of going out and assembling a. A team that uh, is, is not only very, very talented, but it seems as if they put things together as a unit as well. And you know, he does a great job coaching infielders and hitters and got some really good assistant coaches as well. Right side. First baseman Cantu. One up and one down for the Tigers in the home first. Thompson taking two out of three in Tallahassee a year ago. Tigers have won four out of the past six against the Seminoles. Lighter has touched 98. Ooh. Stays in the mid 90s. That'll. I wonder how many professional scouts are here today. I can guarantee it's in the double digits. Curve ball and slider, and we saw how he fooled a lefty batting. Yeah. Canarello with that off-speed pitch. Well, you know, when it comes out of that, that same arm angle, it looks the same, out of the same window, and one is 80 miles an hour and the other one's 95. All DeMathis hitting 319, but trying to get on the right side of things, four of his last 24. Did, though, do some damage the other night against Presbyterian. A couple of home runs, now is four on the season. He was two for five in that game, and he's ahead in the count here, three and oh. Taking all the way, catches the inside corner for strike one. First of two here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. We'll start game number two about an hour after the conclusion of game one. Back here Sunday afternoon for a 1 p.m. first pitch. Here's the 3-1 to Mathis. And a one-out base runner for the Tigers. Leiter is the kind of pitcher, Pete, who, if he gets settled in, He'll really be tough. I mean, he can extend out. He's going to end up facing him for 80, 85, 90 pitches, and he's going to go five or six innings. And I know that Clemson would really like to get into the Florida State bullpen as soon as possible. Blake Wright talked about in our open. He's just as hot as his counterpart at third for the Seminoles. Cam Smith takes ball one. Right, a native of the state of Florida, over in the Clearwater area near Tampa St. Pete. Coming off a three home run game at Floor Field on Wednesday night. He's heading the count 2 0. Coach Backett's talking about Blake Wright being a little more selective and, and, and not just on pitches that are strikes, but getting pitches that he can drive. You've got a four run lead. Now he's behind 3-0 and oh to a second straight hitter. Wright has reached on a free pass just six times to this point in the season. So he's got the green light on 3-0. and 3-1 oh. and one the count. Chase back Mathis and the throw gets away. He'll head on down to second. Two bases. He's going to make the turn and head to third. Nearly ale mailing the, the throw from right field was Tibbs. Good job to reach up and pull it in by Smith. Throwing error on the pitcher puts a runner 90 feet away 
as Alden Mathis stands at third. Ooh, I'm not sure that ball shouldn't have been caught. It wasn't that far off. But a two base throwing error. And here's that here's that situation where you got a guy on some two outs. third base less than two outs infields playing back big hole up the middle and on the outside corner delayed call by our home plate umpire Barry Chambers Wright didn't agree with it and the count goes full what well, a tough pitch 3-2 off speed oh. laid off appeal confirming that first and third now with just one away for the Tigers so in the top half of the first an infield single a walk an error that low to the bases led to the grand slam Boy, just a great job for Wright to to lay off that very sharp breaking pitch on the three two count really good job He's seeing the ball so well. Here in the bottom of the first, two walks after one out. Jimmy Overtop looks at ball one. So finding the plate, an issue early on for Cam Leiter. 4 0 in the season. 3.37 ERA is making his sixth start, sixth appearance as a Florida State Seminole. 2 0 the count. Looked like a bit of a change up there. 88 mile an hour change up. <laughs> <laughs> but that ball had some sink to it. Over top tied for second on the Tiger team with five out of the park this year and he takes strike one. Hmm. Well, I guess after walking the previous two hitters to and you're two, you know up in the count two and oh not bad to take that pitch. Stays outside. Tigers down four early and right at first who's not attempted a stolen base probably not going to be overly aggressive especially nope. with the middle of the lineup. Yeah. Well at the start of this game not indicative of, of, of two top ten programs. And a third walk to load him up. Well Florida State was able to convert in this situation in the top half. Let's see what the Tigers are able to do in the bottom half of inning number one. Jimmy Overtop continues to show a good eye. You Boy. see, he is the very best in the land and reaching via the free pass. He just reached for a team leading 30th time on the season. The Michigan transfer stands at first. Right here. Here's Tristan Bassetta. And uh, just getting on base, keep it, keeping the train rolling. Mm. Off speed, swing and a miss for strike one. Ooh. I'll tell you what. We saw Canarella get fooled by that pitch. That, that seems that, to be more devastating dude. to lefty hitters. Yeah. Coming was, out of the yeah. right hand of lighter. That one stays low. What a really good looking breaking pitch and then the 88 89 mile an hour change up. Tigers trying to. Back up their starter Ethan Darden who got off to a. Rocky beginning in the top half of the inning two and one the count on Bassetta eight for his last 25 didn't get into the starting lineup to the Saturday game a couple of weekends back against UNCG but he's been some kind of hot since skied on the left side it'll be two away with the infield fly rule and it'll be up to Will Taylor. So Taylor would be exhibit A in Eric Backage's argument that batting average means nothing. In that category, it's been a struggle for him in his junior season, hitting just 200. However, got an OPS around 1,000. Slugging percentage very solid, 553, over 400 on base percentage. Gets on almost two times a game. And he looks at a pitch at the top of the zone for strike one. Plus, he's right up there and power on the Tiger team with five home runs. Uh, it's about as a productive of 200 batting average as you can have. Stays outside. Good job by Holbrook with a runner at third. Our two out hits are huge here. Tigers unable to come up with an executed situation with a man on third base in less than two outs. See if Taylor can 
pick up the setup. Lighter went a season best six and two thirds in his start last Friday against Notre Dame at 8-4 Seminoles win. At this rate, he's not going to be able to get anywhere close to that distance. They yeah. try to get into the sixth inning with their very good starting staff. They've been successful for the most part so far. 2-1 on Taylor. Left side, pass Lodis. It'll score one, they'll wave right. Throw to the plate. Out. Really nice throw by Ferrer. Holbrook makes the tag, and that'll do it for the applied the tag. Well, it was a ground ball in the six hole, hit pretty hard directly at Ferrer. And that really makes a difference in terms of making a throw, and he made a throw without a hop. I mean, he did not even mess with the cutoff man and made a good throw, an accurate one. Holbrook did a nice job of making the catch, and, and it looked to me like, like Wright was out, but, uh, but, you know, I like the challenge. Throw definitely beat him. Yeah. Let's give you a look at the tag. Did he get him on the left side before? Ooh. Now, from that angle, it it's doesn't give tell. us a great view, yeah. but yeah. he may well have. We just don't have the ability from that angle to determine it. This angle this may tell be it better. better. Right's left hand reaching for the plate. The left swipe by the catcher, and it looks like he grazed the back left side of right before he touched home plate. Yeah, and a really, really good slide. Now, what about that angle? Again, did he sweep across the top? I don't know if it gives us a great angle. What about here? They could blow that one up. That might be what details. They may not have enough video evidence I, with that that's angle. That's exactly what I was it. thinking. And interestingly, Wright did not immediately call for a review. He knows, <laughs> and so does Holbrook. Those are the only two guys right now that know for sure. And I'm not sure either one of them are talking. Barry Chambers, our home plate ump, and the out will stand. So the Tigers first comes to an end, but they Blake Wright. In the center of the action to close out the home first was inches away from scoring a second run. Ninth place hitter in the order, Alex Lodis. Seminoles the grand slam by Jaime Ferrer, who just threw out the base runner right at the plate. So quite a first inning for the Florida State left fielder. And Darden ahead in the count here, 0-2 on the sophomore out of St. Augustine, Florida. Stays low. Played last season, did Lodis at UNF in Jacksonville. North Florida program out of the A-Sun. Freshman All-America there, right, the opportunity. And one away here in the Seminoles second. Top of the order. Max Williams reached on an infield single on a grounder to the left side that Wright did a nice job on the infield grass stopping, but throw was in the dirt, and Williams would have beaten it out anyway. You can see a pretty significant shift on the right side of the infield. Not as much on the left side this time. More traditional. But Purify is, is really deep and over towards first base. And a second straight batter in the inning in an 0-2 hole. Williams from just outside of Daytona Beach. Their regular center fielder, DMS Ross, currently out with an injury, so Williams getting the opportunity. Hinderleiter, pitcher covering. And two away, much different start to this frame compared to inning number one for Darden. Boy, you know, I mentioned last inning, how does he recover after what can only be described as a devastating first inning? And he's coming out and throwing strikes and got two quick, quick outs. See if he can finish things off here on the top of the second. Cam Smith reaching on a four pitch walk his first time up. 
Takes ball one here is yet to see a strike. Begins the day among the national leaders in batting average. Good cut at that. Watch out. Hit off a brick wall. That one was able to duck out of the way. Yeah, I like this. The guy giving it to a, a young lady who doesn't seem that interested. Ah, now she likes it. Got a souvenir at the game. Rolled on the left side. Shufo. Clean inning. Maybe a guy that that you use on Friday out of the bullpen. You can come back on on Sunday. May not be the case. Hindelighter. Off speed fouls it away and lighter. Nice catch in the stands on that foul ball. Worked out of a bases loaded jam ends up allowing just one run in the first inning. Hinderleiter, see the numbers on the year. Solid work. Transferred from Davidson this season. 0 2 pitch. Well, he has been very valuable to the Tigers, playing a number of different positions first, shortstop, third base. Very versatile. Seven for his last 24. Good day today. Puts him over 300 on the season. Lighter part of a UCF team a year ago that came in and did some damage at Doug Kingsmore Stadium early in the season. They got a sweep. But ended up losing two key players. The guy on the mound and the guy playing second base to the team from Tallahassee this year. A good job there by Hender Leiter just to fight off a 96 mile an hour fastball that was up and in. That's just a pitch. You're not you're probably not going to be able to hit it. You just try to live to see another pitch. Off speed. And the count remains one and two. Told you Florida State nearly 30 new players on their roster. Hender Leiter one of 16 to join the Tigers this season as a newcomer. I mean it's just remarkable. 30 new players. Technically wait, wait. 26, but I rounded up just to make it sound oh, more impressive. Okay. But still, 26 guys. And again, it's not just, you know, they're not just filling space. Most of them are either in their starting lineup or impacting their bullpen. Off speed and a good pitch. First strikeout for Lighter, and it's out number one here in the second. Uh, you say off speed, and it's 87 miles an hour. Looked like a bit of a cutter. Wasn't a, wasn't a big breaking pitch, but boy, that's a tough pitch when you've got that. 95 96 mile an hour fastball and you can throw an 87 mile an hour cutter that moves about two inches. Andrew Chufo it's been a scuffle for him of late. Well, for his last 14 but in the series in Duke last weekend the Tigers took two out of three and some screaming line drives right at fielders and that's kind of how it plays out where you're not going well. Georgetown transfer. Well, the key the strike one. Yeah, right at the bottom of the strike zone. Good pitch. I mean, the key for him as a shortstop is just to make the plays there. He's got to be very solid at shortstop. If a shortstop can hit for you, it's a bonus. Up the middle into center field. That'll get you back on the right track. Got to feel good for Chufo and one of the top. Base stealing threats on the Clemson team reaches with one away. Yeah, Chupo, Chupo five of seven on stolen bases and lighter about one five to the plate. But uh, Holbrook has a really, really good arm behind, behind the plate for Florida State. Jaron Purify has settled in at second base. Ninth place hitter in the order. First pitch swinging lined into right field a base hit. Chufo will stop at second. Tigers have something going with one away. Hmm. Now, yeah, I know that ball was hit pretty hard. Really nice job on a fastball that was pretty much a little bit in. Purified did a great job of inside outing the ball, but a little surprised he didn't try to go first to third there because. The outfielder Tibbs was actually running towards center field, was, which was just the opposite of Ferrer when he made the, the, the uh, throw to the plate. Cam Canarella, 
grounded out to first in the opening inning. Takes outside for ball one. Good speed on the bases. See if Bankage has something in play here with one away. Down by three runs and still early in the game. And a good batter at the plate. Who's heading the count 2-0. and oh. So the command struggles continue for Cam Leiter. Yeah. Interesting, a 1-0 fastball, and then he goes right to the right to the off speed, a changeup against Canarello. Tiger's center fielder mm. takes strike one. What a tough pitch there. Right in on the hands at 96 miles an hour with a little bit of movement on top of it. Four for his last 27, looking to come through and Clemson further chip away at that early 4-0 deficit. 3-1. and one. Holbrook locating it in time before Chufo could break for third. McGuire Holbrook, second year in their program. Began at West Virginia. Time is granted. Eric Bakich arguing that he didn't hear it, but apparently our second base umpire, Doug Vines, is the one who called time out. the yeah. timeout. That would have been an interesting little situation. Three one. Mm. And the count goes full. Good aggressive swing, but perfectly located fastball. Down and away. Young man thrilled with that. Fights him off again. That pitch at 95 miles an hour and up. Yeah, he changed the eye level. The pitch before was at 96. Down and away, and that was up and away, right at the top of the strike zone, and Cam battling. Again, a payoff pitch. That time, 78 miles per hour. Canarello was fooled by that same pitch his first time up. I was thinking the same thing. I think he, he saw that one a little bit better. 45 thrown so far by Leiter through one and a third innings. And Chufo gets a gratuitous throw. Lodi's way off the bag. Canarella drove home nine in the three-game series against the Seminoles last year. Center field, back on it, Williams. Toward the hill, reaches up. And it's out of here. It just kept on carrying, and Cam Canarella ties us up at four. Well, it's another off-speed pitch. Away. And Canarella just drives it to left center field. The wind is blowing out right now pretty vigorously. There you see the off speed. He just kind of sits back on it and drives it that way, and it just keeps carrying well out of here. Number four on the season for Canner. That's a good one to have. Just like that, a 4 4 game. First pitch swinging, skied to left, but Ferrer on it. And has some trouble, and Mathis will truck into second base. Might have been as he ranged up the hill. Got himself off balance. That the terrace. wind might have also played with that one. That is one of the, I think that's one of the biggest home field advantages that you can have because it basically fields are, are pretty much the same. But you see here, I just think he misjudged it. It had no. nothing to do with the terrace, Pete. No. Never touched his glove. It yeah. scored a double. Now and a one out base runner. Again, if, if we can look at the flags, the wind is blowing out vigorously right now pretty much straight out to center field so the ball's carrying and certainly Ferrer was mi was misjudged that ball third double for Mathis right 
right center field and deep. Running grab and a nice catch on the move by Tibbs. Back to second goes Mathis. That looked like it had a chance with the wind Boy. blowing that way off the bat. Yeah, that ball was hit well. Tibbs with a really nice play, and he did have to deal with the terrace. Here you see him going. He made a really nice play there. That ball was driven really hard. Nice play. James Tibbs has played right field before here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. So up to Obertot if the Tigers are going to take the lead here in the second inning after falling behind early for nothing. Off speed. That works well at the top of the zone for strike one. Obertop reaching on a walk his first time up. Typical for him his 30th of the season it leads the team. But he falls behind here 0 and 2. What? Speaking of typical, this Clemson team has been so resilient in bouncing back after getting down in in a baseball game. They, they have the ability to keep competing and battling and, you know, had great opportunities in the first inning to, to put up a crooked number, just couldn't come up with a big hit. Canarella changed that in the bottom of the second. One, two. Fighting it off. Nothing else. Tigers are making lighter work as well. Hey, pitch number 52, and he's not out of the second inning yet. Notre Dame got to him for four runs and six and two thirds. Last Friday, Seminoles went on to win that game. They're trying to stay perfect and get to 20 and 0 on the season. And the count evens two and two. Mathis, the runner at second after that double that was misplayed by Ferrer in left field. Two two coming to the Clemson catcher and a called strike three. Second strikeout in the inning by James Tibbs and here he is to lead things off in the third resilience and grit and Eric package yeah. talked about that yeah. a lot over the first few weeks of the season with this team. Hard shot and foul. Well, that was close. Enderleiter made the dive over there and took a bit of a hop on him. He wasn't able to knock it down. Tibbs. Hit a home run in this ballpark in 2023. A year ago was three for nine with a homer. I should say in 2022 is when he homer here in last season. The home run, three for nine. Mm -hmm. Solo homer in Tallahassee and Darden really bouncing back nicely. Well, I guess. Good looking breaking ball. Well located. Emergency swing to stay alive. And I love that. Hey, I mean, here's your here's your third place hitter who, you know, Super big time average got some power got some pop and just says okay I'm just gonna fight this off again a one two pitch to the Seminoles right fielder two for seven in the series in 2022 here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium was tips and he seems to be just battling with these off speed pitches, breaking pitches. I want to climb the ladder with a fastball. Ferrer, who hit the grand slam in the first, waits on deck, swing and a miss. Stayed with that breaking ball, and it was really well located. Second strikeout for Darden. Jaime Ferrer came to the plate with the bags full in the top of the first, and he crushed one. Oh. A no doubter. Eighth home run of the season for the junior from Puerto Rico. Foul tipped into the glove for strike one here. You saw the numbers on that homer, but he falls behind 0 and 2. Yeah. 
Really nice looking off speed pitch. Not the big breaking ball. Well located on the outside part of the plate, fooled it. Didn't get him to chase. Ferrer homered against the Tigers last season as well. When he was three for 12 with three batted in. Tigers taking two out of three. Guy who also can get on base via the hit by pitch. Nearly 35 of them in his career. So. Wow. Helps the on-base percentage. Tied for their team lead with five this season in that category. Chopper foul. Tigers do want to pitch inside to this Seminoles lineup. Well, they are not easy to strike out. They're shortening up with two strikes. Grounded up the middle and through. Just enough to get by the diving Purify. Now that that was a lot of 15 hopper that was just absolutely perfectly placed. So Ferrer is two for two. He stands on first with one away for Drew Ferro. Oh, a second baseman moved over there this season. Played short for the Knights of UCF a year ago when they played here early on against Clemson. He had himself a series against Tigers pitching. He was five out of eight, couple of home runs, and four batted in. Hitting 358 as he went back home to Tallahassee, play for the Seminoles in his first season. Hey, you think about the, the base runners. For Darden, and you know the, the leadoff hitter Williams was the ball was not hit hard. Then he had the the error, and of course the home run was crushed. But there's another ground ball that just has just finds a hole. Jordan closing in on 50 pitches. My 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 point is I think he's pitched fairly well, with the exception of the mistake on the home run. Figure it would have been first and third with one away. Right. And so that would have been a three run homer for Ferrer. And had things happened better on the first batter Williams, they may have been able exactly. to get him at first on the chopper on the infield. That was ruled an infield hit. One and two on Ferro, who was a freshman All American with UCF last season. Shortstop, Chufo, second one, first, oh. second time of the game, the Tigers turn two. Long throw. Tristan Bassetta popped out to shortstop. Yeah. And his first time up in inning number one. Starts out here 1 0. The batting average at 324. Tiger redshirt sophomore at a JL man in Greenville. Part of a really good high school program. Little number fouled, even the count at one and one. And then he's a guy that, that you know, at the beginning of the year, he, he, he first but seven or eight games, he didn't get in at bat. Just a face in the crowd, but here he is. Got into the starting lineup two weekends ago, already has driven home 11. Off speed. Boy, what a good pitch that is. Good. Well located and really fooled him. And this goes to show, though, if you produce, you'll be in the lineup. <laughs> Swing and a miss on a conference call this week with Link Jarrett, the Florida State head coach, who was suggested by one of the media folks on the call that Lighter is a eventual top five draftee. He had a cousin who, of course, Jack uh, was of that status, and this guy on the hill looks real good. And what was his Third reaction strikeout. to that? I think, like any coach, he said, "Well, we'll see." Yes. <laughs> You as, as a as former as coach, should. my friend, had some very good Perfect. players in your time at Furman, and you probably had them praise, and I'm sure that was your immediately def uh, immediate oh. default answer. Yeah, you say hey, he, he, he works hard, he needs to continue working and improving, and yeah. You never want to uh, overhype the product before you get it out there on the, on the market, so to speak. 
Two straight have gone down on strikes against Leiter. And he bounces one up there to fall behind 2-0 to Will Taylor, who had the RBI single in the first. Yeah, really. He was able to get Mathis in. Wright was thrown out at the plate by Ferrer on the play. Yeah, really good to see him be able to get a base hit in that clutch situation. Which is the inside corner right at the letters. Two and one. Taylor last season went two for ten with a double and three batted in against Seminoles pitching. Of course, he had that three homer game earlier in the year against USCF State. Two Tigers this season with three homers in a yeah. game. It's happened fewer than 20 times in yeah. Clemson program history. And yet with Taylor and Blake Wright, there's coming within a few weeks of each other. Ooh. Count goes full on the Tigers left fielder. Yeah, good, good hack on that 3-1 fastball. Off speed. And a one-out base runner. A fourth walk issued so far by Cam Leiter. And that takes him to pitch 64, and that is a direct function of walking four hitters. A year ago, he walked five in those four and two thirds innings worked for UCF against Clemson, did Cam Leiter. So he's one shy of that total here. Ooh. Top of the zone for strike one. Delivered to Jacob Hindeleiter, who's one of the three strikeouts so far for Leiter. Yeah, you know, I love that. Oh, oh, break and pitch. Just get me over break and pitch, and, and all of a sudden it's an 0-1 count. Then you come back with a 94-mile-an-hour painted down-and-away fastball. Time granted by the home plate umpire. You saw Leiter. Giving a look over to first, Taylor four for five on the Clemson team. Tigers so far in the season, 28 of 34 on stolen base tries. They've run about as much as Florida State has. Opponents just five of seven, and no doubt Eric Backage has that in mind facing the Seminoles team. One, two, right field, a base hit. Six for the Tigers so far. Taylor, the good wheels. He'll zip on over to third. On the corners, one away here in inning number three. Well, I just love that approach. Man on first base. Got a big hole over there on the right side if you hit it on the ground. In this case, he hits it solidly on the line drive, and you've got first and third with one out. Tigers are in business. Andrew Chufo snapped an 0 for 14 with a single in the second. Came in to score on the Canarella three run homer. Big opportunity for him. Once again, a visit to the mound by Moss. Coming up after that, and I'm sure you'll see Armstrong, the left handed pitcher at that point. Chufo, a couple of home runs, 12 driven in. Came down from Washington, D.C., played at Georgetown, the grad transfer. Thought about it, lays off, stays low for ball one. This is a place where Eric Backage likes to get a bunt down. Chufo, four sacrifices this season, but swinging away, and the count evens at one and one. It's best on the Tigers team, so you've got the guy with one away. Still early, though, and yeah. again, May not want to necessarily give up and out. Yep, play for a big inning. Jason Hinderleiter back to first. Hinderleiter among the top base stealing threats for the Clemson team. A perfect five of five this year. One one. Hinderleiter took about a step or two to second and retreats. And one and two now on Chufo the batter. And here's that situation. Be one out man on third. Boy, you've got to put the ball in play. There you see. That might have caught a piece. That's why Chufo stands out. And yeah, Barry Chambers see. took one just above 
Yeah, and he's still struggling a little bit. As he went to yeah. sweep off home plate to the yeah, point where he's going to need to walk it off. He actually looked out to the second base umpire Doug Vines and Chambers shaken up and let's see if he is going to be able to continue behind home plate. Now Barry Chambers one of the best in the business. Yeah, he got got hit just above the groin area. Might have knocked the wind out of him a little bit. Just a, just a really, really good umpire, knows how to run a game, understands the game, has a good strike zone, great demeanor. And the thumbs up. After he was able to walk it off and get some water. And he got a, he actually got a, a, a hand from the Clemson faithful. Yes. <laughs> Gracious crowd. Yeah. Back into the box, Chufo, lighter. One two pitch coming. Count evens two and two. Oh. Boy, Holbrook has really had to be active on that off speed pitch. He's done a nice job keeping it in front of him. Yeah, well, Holbrook, I think, on that time was fortunate because it got in the five hole. Yeah. But because of the breaking pitch spin, it hit his foot. Grounded to second. Lodis for one on to first. Not in time. Run will come across. Taylor scores to make it a 5-4 game. Give Chupo the RBI and the Tigers have a lead for the first time. And Lodis made a nice backhanded play, but you're going to see that the feed to Perot is not real good. That actually wasn't a backhand. The feed took him towards center field. And it would have been a really, really tough turn for Ferro and run for the Tigers. Chuf Chufo really working to get down that line. Fielder's choice. Chufo driving home his 13th run as a Tiger. Ninth place batter in the order. Jaron Purify greeted lighter with a single. Later came home on the Canarella three run homer in inning number two. What a good looking. Freshman, this guy is out of Detroit. 2023 Michigan High School Player of the Year in a 1 0 pitch. And that one bouncing up there. Holbrook couldn't contain it. And down to second goes Chufo. That breaking pitch about a 55 footer. Wild pitch puts a runner in scoring position with two away. Those free bases that we talk about all the time, Pete. And now, pure fight can come up with it. It really makes it hurt. 15 batted in so far for the Tiger freshman second baseman. 2-0. Out of edge. Yeah, 15 batted in and only, you know, 16 games, 10 of which he has started. So only in 40 at bats, he's had 15 runs batted. That's that's pretty good. Back to back one run games for this 19 and 0 Florida State team 4 3 last Sunday against Notre Dame then the midweek victory against Stetson one nothing. Oof. So they've been tested of late but they have shown to be dominant Tigers hanging right in there after falling behind early 4 nothing on the Jaime Ferrer first inning Grand Slam. Well you, as you know it's so hard to to have a you know 19 20 game winning streak in the game of baseball. Two out walk puts him on first and second and look who's coming up. It's overpowering. He's going to throw a lot of breaking pitches change speeds and locate. Armstrong went one and two thirds against the Tigers a year ago. They touched him for six hits and six earned runs. The game he started. Canarella, of course did damage against the Seminoles last year going six out of 12 and damage so far today one for two with that homer. 1-0 pitch coming, and the count evens. Boy, interesting arm slot for the lefty yeah, Armstrong. Yeah, kind of a three quarters, maybe even a lower three quarters arm slot. Our arm slot. Two and one, the count. You know, now you've got we talked about wanting to not allowing Cam Lighter to settle in and. 
He certainly did not do that. And you get into the Florida State bullpen early. 2-1 pitch. Little number up the third base side. It'll go foul. Chufo will retreat to second, purify to first. And the count now even on the Tigers sophomore from over in the PD area. Hartsville, South Carolina was a star for the Red Foxes there. And right out of the box, became a star for the Clemson Tigers last season. I mean, from the very first game, he swung the bat well and looked very comfortable. Speaking of comfortable, I think Purify has really settled in. That last at bat was, was a really solid at bat. 2 2 to the Clemson center fielder. Holber thought so, but the only opinion that counts is Barry Chambers, the home plate umpire. And that was full just, just off of the plate. And you can see that nice frame job by Holbrook. And our track man shows that to be a ball. Payoff pitch, runners will be on the move. Ripped past the shortstop, Lodis. Chufo scores easily. Purified a third, a two out RBI single for Canarella. Tigers build a lead to 6 4. Well, I don't think, I don't think Lodi saw that ball very well. Kind of a tough play for him, might have been tailing a little bit. You can see a little bit of tail on the ball, but he's definitely there. But a solid hit. An emphatic reaction for Canarella. Four batted in in the ball game. Give him 21 on the season. Lodis may still be wondering where that ball is. That was just going to be hard to handle. Even if he knocked it down, it probably was going to deflect and everyone would have been safe anyway. Alden Mathis looks to continue the inning. Doubled back in the second. Was left stranded. Reached and scored in the first by way of a walk. You know, you go back to that double play ball that the Seminoles had an opportunity to get out of the inning, unable to turn it. It's ended up costing them another run. Tigers up seven to five now. Good hustle by Chufo to prevent the inning ending double play in which he was able to get Taylor across with a go ahead run. Two scored in the inning. Tigers with a single run in the first, the three run homer by Canarell in the second, and looking to add on to the two they've put on the board here in the home third. And two and one the count on the right fielder, Mathis. We and talked about the compacted schedule. You've got three games that are going to be played or at least started in, in 24 hours. Swing and a miss. 81 miles an hour. Armstrong worked last weekend against Notre Dame, pitching two and a third innings. Count goes full. And the red hot Blake Wright waiting on deck. Came out of the bullpen against the Irish. Allowed a hit, one earned run. Four strikeouts and the two and one third innings worked. Payoff pitch. Skied high to right. Tibbs looks like he has room. Continues to back up. Mm -hmm. And a bit of a ways up the terrace. Puts it away. Head to the top of the fourth inning, 6-4. The Tigers bouncing back after the early deficit. Eric Backitch, the head coach. A couple weeks ago, I heard you say the resilience of this team and, and just that ingredient that every team doesn't necessarily have has shown through early on. And today, the latest example, I would guess. Yeah, we've, you know, kind of been been there before many times, get down uh, some type of an early deficit and have to battle our way back. So, yeah, this is... Uh, all too familiar territory for us, which is good because there's no panic in the guys. They know there's a lot of game. And uh, even though f a four spot sucks in the first inning, uh, there's plenty of time. 
Right, Co Coach. I was most impressed with uh, Ethan Darden that to you know give up the really made just one bad mistake in that first inning, giving up a home run on the pitch. It was pretty much down the middle. But after that, my goodness, for him to come back and pitch so well, pretty impressive. Yeah, he's a tough kid, and he bounced back really well after that. And. Uh, he's just going to need to keep doing what he's doing right there and getting ground ball outs. Um, you know, when he's throwing that sinker ball. Yep. And uh, this is an early action, free swing in, first pitch, you know, aggressive type team. So it's going to be important to try to live down in the zone and get some ground balls. He's only faced seven batters since the start of the second inning. Different kind of pitching plan today. You told us kitchen sink in pregame. Uh, any pitch count on Darden or any desire to get him to a certain point in this contest? No, it's just going to be, you know, if he can be efficient like this. Now, this will be a big one here. He's got two quick outs. Now, how can he get him? This yep. will be a big test. Yeah, you see a lot of pitchers that, you know, this is where the four pitch walk comes in. Yep. Um, so need him to stay focused here and uh, and just keep attacking the zone. But um, but no, no pitch count or, or anything like that. We'll just kind of keep watching the game. And if we get into a jam at any point, we'll go to the high leverage guys and you know, the kitchen sink, meaning everyone's available. Yes. Um, yep. So we're not going to hold anyone for game two. Um, so hopefully uh, he can be efficient and keep doing what he's doing at the bottom of the zone. OK, Eric Bankage, head coach, you were almost with us for an entire half inning. That might have been a new North American record. But thanks for joining us. Well, here we go. We yeah. can make it. There we go. <laughs> three All up right, and yeah. three down as McGuire. His relationship with his former head coach and guy who talking to Link Jarrett you certainly understand was like a father to him as well. Eric Backage, of course, his record speaks for itself. Year number two at Clemson with already an ACC tournament championship to his credit. Blake Wright starts things out here in the Tigers fourth inning. Reached on a walk was thrown out on a bang bang play at the plate. On what was an RBI single for Will Taylor. The Tigers scored a single run in that first inning. The numbers for Wright, prodigious to say the least. He's already passed last year's home run total when he hit eight for the season. Drove home 45. Comes into today more than halfway to his RBI total as well. Uh, he really he liked to have that pitch back. He was on that one, just missed it. Right out of Bel Air, Florida. Right there in the Tampa St. Pete area. And Armstrong gets him to chase. Out number one. Fourth strikeout by Florida State pitching and the first for Armstrong. And a pitch that's down and away and. Coach Backage had talked a little bit about. Right laying off those pitches that are out of the strike zones or even ones that were. In the strike zone but on the corners. Prior to having two strikes and. Unable to lay off of that one. Jimmy Obertop reached on a walk in the first. Went down looking against the starter Cam Leiter who's on the hook for what would be his and the Florida State team's first loss of the season. If the Tigers are able to maintain this lead. Armstrong from just outside of Atlanta, one of the few holdovers on this Florida State team. Second time that Obertop goes down on strikes and two up and two down by way of the strikeout here in the Tigers fourth inning. Had a big cut at it. Tigers going to send up a pinch hitter for Tristan Bassetta. The lefty batting Bassetta taken down for Nolan Narocki. Freshman from Long Island. Out of Rockville Center, New York. Good start to the season. Had a place in the starting lineup. Last played back on March 9th, so here he That's returns. It's been a while, and I, I really liked him. He's got some, got some pop in his bat. And this is simply a lefty-righty matchup thing. And you mentioned half of half of the uh, Pitchers on the Florida State staff are left handed, so. Swings of the first pitch, skied on the right side. Armstrong trying to have a perfect inning. 
And he does. Tigers going in order for the first time in this game. Head to the fifth. February 1st. Right. Yeah, still very close to the Florida State program. His son, Mike Jr., replaced Mike Martin, and then Link Jarrett returned to his alma mater, who was like a son to Mike Martin yeah. as well. Two years ago, Link Jarrett was instrumental in the memorial service with Mike Martin's wife, Carol, and talked so oh. affectionately about his former head coach. That is driven high and deep to left and gone. Alex Lodis, his fourth home run of the season. First time the Seminoles get on the board since inning number one. The ball will be returned from the grandstand and left. It's a 6-5 game. Well, we talked about the balance and the depth of this offense. Number nine hitter getting his fourth home run of the year on an off-speed pitch that was not well located. And you get it up in the air here today with that wind blowing out, it's going to carry. Darden allowing a second homer in the game and a second on the season. Link Jarrett happy to see that out of the ninth place hitter in his order. Top of the lineup now. Max Williams has singled and scored and also grounded out. So Link Jarrett talking at length this week about his relationship with Mike Martin. And not only was he a great shortstop for number 11 in the 90s, but the post player coach relationship grew even more. He would go back during his days in professional baseball with Link Jarrett and work out in Tallahassee. And they had many long talks in his office. Purify calling off his first baseman, battling the wind and a somersault on the back end of that grab for out number one. As Williams is retired, brings up Cam Smith. But the deep conversations they would have, and then as time went on, the phone conversations and Link Jarrett pointing out that the voicemails that Mike Martin Sr. would leave him, they would just be so off the wall, many of them down to earth, but just uh, just had a certain nature to them. And Jarrett, in, in reminiscing about his times with Mike Martin this week, noting he wishes he had saved the voicemails. It's a regret uh, that he has. Interesting, yeah. Wishes he had saved those many voicemails from his former coach, his mentor, and his dear friend, Mike Martin, number 11, winning his coach in the history of NCAA baseball. And again, passed away just a few months ago, but will always be remembered fondly in Florida State history for his long run. And, you know, decades from now, we'll be looking down at that Florida State dugout, and Link Jarrett could well be still guiding his alma mater in amassing the wins. Done a great job in his previous stops. UNCG, he built a Southern Conference Championship program. Two-time National Coach of the Year in just three seasons leading Notre Dame, and then he moved south to Tallahassee a couple of summers ago, right on to first. Two away after the home run, and Smith retired for a second straight time. Well, you talked about Mike Martin, and what a, I mean, just a gregarious, fine man. Uh, my teams were the victim of three times. My first year at Furman, we were really rebuilding, and I didn't, I didn't put Florida State on the schedule, but they were on the schedule, and I, <laughs> we went down to Florida State, and Link Jarrett was the uh, shortstop. And, uh, of course, they beat us three times. They were really, really good. And... So many times they'd get to Omaha, they were the, the show horse out there yeah. and just came up shy. The, all the great players that came through their program, from guys like Doug Mankiewicz to Buster Posey. Darden was going for the kill, but Tibbs lays off, and it's one and two. Tibbs not only walked and scored in the first, but made a huge play when the Tigers were threatening earlier in the game. Running grab in the right center field gap. Hard oh, shot. A Diving stop. Hinderleiter to Darden covering to retire the side. Top shelf play. First baseman to pitcher. Strong on for a third inning of work. Got the Tigers in order in the fourth. Back to a one-run game after Florida State jumped up 4-0 on the Ferrer first inning grand slam. Tigers scored. A run in the first, three in the second on the Canarello home run. Two more in the third. Retired in order for the first time in the fourth, and Will Taylor. Count evens at one and one on the Tigers' left fielder. Been on base each time. RBI single in the first, a walk and a run scored in the third.
Jake Armstrong a really solid fourth inning, clean inning. Hey, good pitch at the top of the zone. Yeah, and I, you know, I see Taylor. I mean, he's trying to pull that ball, kind of took, opened up his front side a little bit on the swing. I like to see him try to drive the ball up the middle. Count goes full three and two. We talked about it earlier when he was up. The batting average has been down there all year long, and it had been a, a real struggle for him over the first couple of weeks. But the OPS is right around 1,000. He's been reaching base roughly a couple of times a game. And he gets on for yeah. a third straight time here this afternoon. And he's a leadoff base runner in the Tigers' fifth. So Taylor at first, good speed there. And one other thought about Link Jarrett and his relationship with old number 11, the late Mike Martin, of course, passing away in February. The first game of this season, the first game the Seminoles played after the passing of Mike Martin, Florida State won the ball game 11 to nothing. Oh. Ah. First walk issued by Armstrong. Leiter allowed five free passes to the Tigers, ripping it. Hinder Leiter, who, if baseball had played out as it usually does, should have been the one leading off this inning after closing out the previous half inning oh. with a great play. In our break, Ron, you noted that's why you want to have a good athlete at first. And usually a guy who gets to college baseball at some point played shortstop earlier in his career because he was probably the best athlete and maybe had the best arm on his high school team. Unless they're left-handed. That's Unless well left hit. Left-handed, skied high and deep to right. Hinderleiter knew it off the bat. Out of here for home run number five. And the lead grows to 8-5. Well, that was appropriate for baseball. Make the big play in the top half of the inning come up second not first and drive one on a pitch that pretty much right down the middle and he kind of inside out of that fastball and just drove it to right center field good swing yet another walk comes back to haunt the Florida State Seminoles Hinderleiter following the free pass to Taylor that fifth home run now 22 batted in for the Davidson transfer once again, Clemson answering the run from Florida State. And you mentioned the walk. There are five walks now for Florida State pitching, and, and it, it's hurt up a little bit. Well, he's calling a strike. Chufo heading to first. Let's see if he's going to be called back. It was a I think Second home run allowed, by the way, by Armstrong. Yeah. And Chufo will return to home plate. I think he's maintaining, Barry Chambers is maintaining that Chufo made an attempt to bunt the ball. Wow. That's a tough call. Either way. Our home plate umpire Barry Chambers has been at the center of attention. A call at home plate, which held up. He called right out, and it looked like video supported that. Shaken up earlier, so did it catch the did right hand of Chufo? It did. It looks like it did. That's not the question. The question is, did he, did he, he attempt? Did he offer? Yes. Yeah, it did. That's right. it. It was the offer that's the strike, no matter where it hit on his body. First base umpire. Joseph Blumenauer. So he, did he offer, and the judgment was that he did, and that's the only thing that matters in that case. 0-1 pitch. Tigers getting a two-run bomb out of Hinderleiter, a three-run homer from Cam Canarella. But again, five free passes issued by the starter, Leiter. And and one here in the fifth inning by Armstrong. And three of the five walks issued by Florida State pitching have eventually scored. If he, now if he walks this, this hit, if he walks two for you're going to see somebody get up in the Florida State bullpen, I would think. 
Chupo his last time up legged out a potential double play ball. He was able to get Taylor in. And then he eventually came home on the RBI single by Canarello, but he goes down swinging here. That's, you know, 288 mile an hour fastballs. He just moved it around a little bit, down and away, and then up. Changed the eye level. Chufo unable to hang, or uh, unable to catch up to that fastball. Third strikeout for Andrew Armstrong, who retired the Tigers in order in the fourth inning, but when he came on in the third, he was greeted by the RBI single off the bat of Canarella. Has given up the two run homer to Hinderleiter here in inning number five. Jaron Purify, one of those to reach on a free pass his last time up. Also singled and scored back in the second. And the freshman second baseman ahead in the count, 2 0. Yeah, it, it, you know, I mentioned earlier that he just looks really comfortable in there. He's seeing the ball very well. Good hack. It, it's a little bit reminiscent of Canarella last year. You know, as soon as Canarella started getting at bats, which was immediately, he looked comfortable in the plate or at the plate. And, and certainly Purify, I think, has become even less anxious, more patient. Center field, well hit. Williams, shy of the hill. Wind's blowing out to right center, but just before he started to go up the terrace, Williams was able to pull it away. Out of the sky for out number two. Got in on Purify just a little bit. Ball hit, well hit. Cam Canarella hit a hard ground at first in the opening inning for an out, but he has stroked it well since. Three run homer and an RBI single for the Tigers center fielder. Takes ball one. Boy, that's a breaking pitch right down the middle. Canarello would like to have that one back. That's one you get away with once in a while, but not often. Now, 8 of 15 in his career against Florida State, make it 9 of 16. Two out base runner for the Tigers. Closing in on a 10 hit game as a team. That's hit number nine. They've already added a couple to this lead here in the fifth inning. And it's another breaking ball inside part of the plate and Cam doing what he does, just driving, hitting line drives. Alden Mathis. Sky to the right fielder Tibbs in the third inning. Walked and scored in the first. Goes the other way, foul. His was the first of three consecutive Free passes issued in that opening inning by the yeah. starter Cam Leiter. Tigers got to him for just one run, but it kind of set the early tone that his command and control Leiter's was going to be all that good. Yeah. And he exited. I mean, he, I think he, he was at 50 plus innings after, or 50 plus pitches after two innings. 0 oh 2, Mathis was. Four for his last 24 coming in, but he did have the two homer game against PC at Floor Field on Wednesday night. One and two. Doubleton was left stranded in the second inning. Well, you see Armstrong, he, he loves that breaking pitch away and that fastball in on the lefty left handed hitters. One two pitch. Floater into right. That'll get down for a base hit. Canarella heads to third. Tigers again have him on the corners. This time in the fifth inning with two away. It's another breaking ball away. Doesn't get it. Well, it's it's really right on the outside part of the strike zone. Mathis sits back and because it's a an off-speed pitch is able to pull it 
Gets that bat head on the plane of the ball. Boy. Now I like the move because you've got really, you know, right who would have been facing the left-handed pitching Armstrong. I, you know, I like that matchup for right. Now you bring in a, a low three-quarter guys guy in, in short with a 88 mile an hour fastball and then that sweeping breaking pitch that moves away from right. And the Hill transferred in this season from West Virginia. That one might land in the Mountain State. Blake Wright clobbers one. A three run blast. Home run number 11. And the lead grows to six runs. Wow. Pete, I, I am just not sure how Blake Wright was able to keep that pitch fair. That ball was up and in. It was not in the strike zone, and it was coming in on him, and he just did an incredible job. Look at him getting his hands inside the ball and dropping that bat head on it, and that was a no-doubter. About, about five or six rows up with that wind blowing out. Big swing. He's on fire. Seminoles pitching had allowed just 12 home runs over their first 19 games coming in. It's the third long ball hit by the Tigers today. And the you second know, in the inning. Don't discount what Cantarella and Mathis did by just two solid base hits with two outs. A lot of times you get two outs and and you kind of say, okay, well let's, you know, we'll, we'll we'll have a big inning next inning, but they just kept that train rolling and you get your hot hitter up there and he comes through. Jimmy Obertop, eighth man to come to the play for the Tigers in this 5th inning. 5 across. Hinderleiter hit the 2-run blast, a 3-run homer for Wright. Earlier in the game, Canarella his 3-run bomb in the second inning. At the time, it tied the ball game up at four apiece. And two and two of the count. I was going to note that the guy on the hill transferred in this season from West Virginia. The guy behind the plate came to them from the Mountaineers a year ago. Hmm. Did, you see, did you see that sweeping, breaking pitch? And again, I go back to that right home run. Boy. That was an impressive swing. Absolutely crushed. Hinderleiters was a no doubter. Obertop, and now mighty Florida State. Double figures and runs. Seminoles pitching, which has been so good this year, had not allowed a double figure run total to this point. Well, I like what Clemson's doing. They're not trying to do too much. They're hitting the ball to all fields. And with the wind blowing out today, if you, you know, again, drive it, and regardless of whether you pull it or hit it the opposite way, it's got a chance to go out. Ethan Darden reeling after the first four batters led to those four early runs, but he is on the attack and really has been since. Swing and a miss. Ferrer goes down. Third strikeout in the game for the Tigers' left-hander. On the good side for a win as he starts out in the sixth inning with the K. Yeah, really good change up. Sinking fastball. Yeah. He's keeping the ball down really well. And it's, you know, the wind blowing out like this. It's, I mean, he's the ideal pitcher with that, that sinker that he throws. Got to keep the ball out of the air. He's made a couple of mistakes and he's paid for them. But boy, I, again, just so impressed with what he has done. He's lived at the bottom of the strike zone and thrown strikes. Drew Ferro, 0 for 2 so far. Jordan got him to strike out for the first out in the game, and that was one as good for the mind as it was for the strikeout column for Jordan at the time and for a second time today. Ferro goes down swinging for out number two. Pitch that's actually out of the strike zone. And that sinker. Uh, you really got to talk to your talk to your team about you gotta you gotta lay off that pitch that starts at the knees because it's gonna end up down at the ankles.
Darden's retired nine of the last ten batters he's faced. Dingus. The DH who singled in the first, grounded out to short in the fourth inning. You get the two quick outs. Can he finish it? Now one and two. Tallahassee Community College transfer came down from Beekman, New York. It was a 383 hitter in the junior college ranks last year. Hard shot. Second hop. Chufo. Time. Three up and three down. Go the Seminoles in the sixth inning. Second time Darden's gotten the mighty Seminole up for a second time. Came on as a pinch hitter for Tristan Bassetta in the fourth inning. He popped out to second. Seeing his first action in two weeks. Last played in the Saturday game against UNCG on March 9th. On for a second inning of work is short. Lighter the starter is on the hook for what would be his and his team's first loss of the year. They went to Armstrong. Who was not sharp as the Tigers got to him. He ended up giving up five of their runs. That's ripped backhanded at third. Smith and out number one. Well, it's a breaking pitch that Naraki just couldn't wait long enough. Only 76 miles an hour. Hit off the end of the bat. Nice play by Smith. Solid throw. Actually, the First six runs in the ball game charge of the starter lighter. Armstrong allowing four, and of course short was greeted by the Blake Wright. Bomb out of the park. Tigers DH Narwaki is retired. Will Taylor been on base all three times. Has an RBI single, a couple of walks, and two runs scored. Mm. Off speed at 74 miles an hour to even the count at one and one. <laughs> Boy, that is so tough. He's got that low three quarters delivery, short arms it. Mile high on the right side. First baseman is Cantu. And in foul territory for out number two. Jacob Hindelider knew this was out of here about two steps up the first base line. He crushed it to right center field. Fifth home run is a Tiger, a guy who hit 25 home runs in his four seasons playing for the Davidson Wildcats. Coming to the Clemson program this year. I, Native of Hawaii. Yeah, he's just such a, a, a great addition because of his versatility. The ability, I, again, we've talked about him playing first. He's played second. He's played third. And uh, had been quite an offensive contributor as well. At 22 RBIs now. Made that great play, the diving stab. Oh, yeah. To Rob James Tibbs to close out the fifth inning after they'd gotten the solo homer by Lodis. And Cinder Leiter was able to stop it. It's not like he knocked it down. It was a hard shot right into his glove, and he was able to flip to the first baseman, Darden, covering. Off speed. Nothing happening in the Clemson bullpen, so we should see Darden for a seventh inning. Yeah, why not? I mean, he's throwing strikes. 2-2 Two -two to the Clemson first baseman. Cue shot foul. What makes a guy like Noah Short so difficult is a little bit of an unusual delivery point, low three quarters. Then he's got that. He's got two pitches that come out of the exact same window. One of them breaks down and away. It's his off-speed pitch, and his fastball breaks into the right-handed hitter. Right field, Tibbs with his center fielder closing calls him off, and out number three. Tigers going to kill, on to work in a seventh inning. Nice bounce back from some recent tough times on the hill, and from an opening inning in which the first. 
Three batters reached and set up Jaime Ferrer for a grand slam and an early 4 nothing lead for the Seminoles. But for the most part, Darden has kept a very good lineup in check since. And what did you see in common with all of those strikeout pitches? They were down. All of them down. He's kept the ball down very, very well. Gotten a lot of ground balls. One and two on the first baseman, Daniel Cantu, who had a second single with one away and four in in the first inning after Dingus had reached and a, now a second base hit in the game for Cantu. Keep in mind, Tigers in the first inning had seen the four run score. Darden got the strike out of Faro, but then Dingus and Cantu singled. Now you've got pretty good hitting catcher and Holbrook at the right. plate. Four runs in. If he runs into one, you're really in a hole. Right. And they able to get their pitcher Darden to induce the ground ball double play. Uh, yeah, I just thought he kept his composure so well in that inning. Leadoff man on seventh hit in the game for the Seminoles here in inning number seven. Holbrook, the catcher. Hard shot. Liner stabbed by Chufo. Wasn't sure if he was going to try to play the hop. It almost looked like he fell yeah. down into that catch yeah. and then lunged for it. And I, I think it was one that might have fooled him a bit. Ball was not hit really hard. He made the right play to get the out, especially with the with the six run lead. But uh, you know, if he could have short hopped that, that's that's surely a double. Six and a third, seven hits. Four earned runs. Drive to left. Back on it. Taylor came in. Then he had to head on back. Makes the catch. Now the runner. Cantu had made the turn around second. And they double him up. Third time of the game. The Tigers turn a double play. This one the more uncon. From, from Taylor and the other one from Chufo to, to double up Cantu at, at first base. And, but you're right. I think he, the, the base runner was faked out by Taylor. Here's Chufo, one for three on the day. Single and a couple of runs scored. Behind 0 and 2. And see, that's that's a pitch that you absolutely have to think the other way. That pitch that's down and away, that's breaking away. Called strike three. Ooh. Quick work of the shortstop. Chufo, who goes down looking, second time he's gone down on strikes. Chufo not happy with that, and that caught the corner. So what you were saying on the previous pitch, though, why is that? Uh, well, I mean, the, the ball is going away from the right-handed hitter, and, and it, it appears that guys are way out front. They need to sit back and think up the middle and the other way because he's not overpowering with his with his fastball. It is 88 mile an hour, but I think you can sit back and identify the pitch and and think up the middle. Let 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 the ball get deep. Jaron Purify. Oh, oh, man, I hate to see him get hurt at this point. Ooh. That got him on the left wrist. First, there was the appeal by the home plate umpire, Ooh. Barry Chambers, to first. Ooh. Now you can see the fastball running in on Purify. Two-seam fastball. It's actually his right wrist. Almost looked like it caught up closer to the fingers yeah. on that first replay. Look, we had Eric Bakich. And Boy, that, that would be a, a big loss for the Tigers and that's the kind of thing that he's shaking it off. Another look. And he did I think he did hold up that was really close. But ooh, that hurt. Honey you know it's interesting he's, he's, he's shaking his left hand it appeared on the first replay. That it was right his right hand which was hit. Kimberly Hill the Tigers athletic trainer. Well, with the head coach package out to give a look to purify so he stands at first. One more look at it. You can see fastball running in. Oh and it's his 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 left fingers his fingertips almost. Second time the freshman second baseman has reached this year on a hit by a pitch. Cam Canarella having himself quite a day. Three run homer a couple of singles. Driven in four. 
One to know the count on Canarella after the mound visit. Purify at first. And a hard grounder. Can to the second wide throw. Hopping up Purify. He'll race to third. Canarella into second. E3, which allows the runner to advance to third as Canarella reaching on a fielder's choice. One away, and the Tigers have him on second and third. Yep. Well, just a poor throw from Cantu. He's plenty inside. Did the base runner was not in the way. He caught it well inside the base, the baseline, and just threw the ball about six feet off of the base. Lodice had very little, if any, chance. This this game open. Lefty on lefty, Alden Mathis. Two for three on the day. It's also walked. A couple of runs scored. He was the last batter that Armstrong faced. Short came on and gave up that three-run bomb to Blake Wright in the fifth inning. Tigers a five spot in inning number five. Mm. To extend the lead to where it is right now, an 11-5 advantage. Yep. This guy's into, he, I mean, he, he's probably a guy that pitches almost exclusively to left-handed hitters. Good ERA, 2.25. Yeah. Six strikeouts in his four innings of work for Hulks. And a 1 1 coming to Mathis. Purify the runner at third. Rella is at second base. Into was. At a weird angle on the grounder to first by Cantarella. That one's ripped. Stay fair, it does. To the wall it goes. A couple will come home. Second double on the afternoon for Alden Mathis. This time he brings home two runs, and the Tigers grow the lead to eight, 13 to five. Well, Connor Holtz went to that breaking pitch one too many times. That was over the middle of the plate. Math is able to stay with it, drive it down the right field line, and two RBI, and that really breaks this game open. For now, the two runs are unearned, but yeah. all that matters is they count. Still just one out. Here's Blake Wright. He'd walked, flied out to right, and gone down swinging before he hit his 11th home run of the season his last time up. Got out of here in about two seconds. Give right now 11 to move into third place. I'm not sure what's happened with the Virginia Cavaliers today as far as the ACC home run chase goes. Hit just eight last year, but what a season he's having. Now he's driven home 31 on the year. Remember a couple years ago, Tigers had a pretty powerful third baseman. Perhaps this, this is the 2024 version of Max Wagner yeah. unfolding before our eyes in Blake Wright. 1-1 one, one pitch. Chopper. Smith didn't know if he should charge or play it. On to first. Hmm. Athos holds it second. That's two away. Boy, Smith is impressive. Just athletic. Good size, swings the bat, talking about third base, and then that arm. Cam Smith. Had a great summer in the Cape Cod League, and that really turned him around at the plate. Jimmy Obertop reached on his team leading 30th walk in the first inning, was left stranded, has since gone down looking and twice swinging. 0 for 3 on the day, but batting average still up there. Began the day second on the team at 333. Right 
Count evens at one and one. 86 miles an hour. On the delivery by Holtz. Fourth pitcher used by Florida State. They've got a good one going in the nightcap. Uh, left to use. Best in the country with a 0 0.33 ERA. That gets away from Holbrook. He still doesn't know where it is. The first baseman can too. Might have also hit the home plate umpire Barry Chambers again. <laughs> Down to third goes Mathis. Barry, Barry having a rough day. Jamie Arnold, the sophomore lefty, gets a start for the Seminoles in game two. We're still not sure who's going to get the call to start out the second game for wild Clemson. Pitch, and that is dead off of his knee. And it also might have caught a piece oh. of Holbrook beyond his padding, the catcher, so. That might have been a two for one special right there. The Tigers move a runner over to third. Boy, that was solid off of. Yeah, they, they both took a beating on that one. Barry Chambers, the home plate ump, is going to be reminded of this game for a while. He yeah. was shaken up earlier on a foul tip, and that time looked like caught a piece of that hard pitch on his right leg. And for a second time this afternoon, the home plate umpire gets a very nice and cordial round of applause. What's going on here? What, you know, what's going on? That's that's almost un-American. It's almost like a golf it's, clap. It's so polite. Yeah. <laughs> no, very classy by the Clemson fans. And, and I've talked about Barry being, he's one of the top umpires around. Got a great demeanor. Good strike zone, good judgment, runs the game well. 3-1 to Obertop. And the count goes full. <laughs> He's limping around back there. He will be happy to move down to third for the yeah. second game of this series for sure. Speed ball four. Upper top doing what he does. Second walk in the game, 31 on the season yep. to add to his team lead, and now first and third. What is he? He struck out three times, but he's been on base twice. With walks on either side. Yeah. Extends the inning. It really does make you think about batting average as a telling stat. It's an important stat, but Again, it's how many times you can get on because if you're on, then you have the potential to score. If you're not on, you could hit the hardest liners in the world and, and go one for four and have a decent batting average. But if you can get on two or three times a game without getting a hit, it says a lot, high and tight. Nolan Narraki, his third time up in the game, he came on as a pinch hitter for the DH Tristan Bassetta back in the fourth inning. He has popped out to second and grounded to third. After being back in action, Tiger redshirt freshman out of Rockville Center, New York, on Long Island. I, I would think that for Coach Link Jarrett, he's not going to use any of his high leverage guys out of the bullpen at this point. Down by eight and only six outs. In tight, foul tipped into the glove of the catcher. Holbrook. Two one pitch, three and one the count. A Rocky, three eighty one hitter over his first eleven games coming into this afternoon. A little bit of pop too, three homers and thirteen batted in. Early on, same playing time as a Clemson Tiger. Ooh. Another full count on a batter. Man. He would like that one back, Pete, because <laughs> that was a really good swing. Balanced, short, just missed it. Runner at first. Obertop will be on the move with a pitch. And a liner to left, and Ferrer has to play it on a bounce. In comes Mathis. It's a 14-5 Clemson lead. Over to third goes Obertop. 
And an RBI single for Nolan Naraki. You got to feel good for him. Yeah, I talked home 14 on the season. Yeah, I talked a little earlier. I, I like Naraki and the way he swings the bat. It's a fastball right down the middle. And he drives it out there to, to left field. Another RBI, another hit for the Tigers. Just really putting on quite an offensive display here. Link Jaron will go to the bullpen, or so it seems, for a fifth. Florida State had four hits in the first inning, only three hits after that. So Clemson pitching has really done a nice job. And five of their first six batters reached, but they came away with just the four runs. So this could be a pseudo walk-off situation for Will Taylor. Taylor popped out to first his last time up, but prior to that, RBI single, a couple of walks and two runs scored. Boy, Holbrook's been working. <laughs> Yeah, McGuire Holbrook, where's the number 25? First name McGuire spelled just like the former Major League slugger. Apparently, family a big fan of Mark McGuire. His dad actually played baseball at Stanford. 2-0 pitch coming. And as the story goes, their folks tell us, as that's a strike at the bottom of the zone, McGuire Holbrook, the catcher for Florida State, his dad, his last out made in college was a ground out against Florida State to a shortstop named Link Jarrett of the Seminoles. Huh. Or a chopper left. Huh. And Link Jarrett says, that's what they tell me. So the guy who's catching now, playing for Link Jarrett, who transferred from West Virginia. Put an end to his ago, dad's career. His dad grounded out as his last college out, apparently, as a Stanford Cardinal. They were playing Florida State. I'm guessing it was in the NCAA tournament or the College World Series. And that's ripped to left, and that's going to do it. Will Taylor and the Tigers will walk him off. Runner at third was safe. Obertop coming across with what proves to be the winning run in a 15-5 run rule victory for the Tigers. Second RBI single in the game for Taylor, and Clemson hands.